Today, we have Pastor Karen Berger, and she is the pastor at the Mamaroneck United Methodist Church in Mamaroneck on Pulse Road. And so now, she's going to share a little bit about herself and what she does at Mamaroneck United Methodist Church. So welcome, Pastor Thank Karen. Thank you, Cicely. Mm -hmm. Appreciate being here. Well, I'm very excited about serving at Mamaroneck United Methodist Church. I was raised in the United Methodist Church, grew up in White Plains, New York. I was ordained in um, 1988 as deacon and 91 as elder in the United Methodist Church and attended Drew Theological School. And I've had an opportunity to serve in many different parishes in New York and Connecticut. Um, so I've just begun at Mamaroneck United Methodist in July. So we are new and Wonderful. beginning this new relationship at the church. It's exciting. It's a church that believes strongly in interfaith work, interfaith dialogue. It's a church that believes in international uh, missions work, sending teams to Nicaragua mm. and other places. One of our youth is about to go to Bolivia in February. Oh, very uh, a church that's involved in the local community with things like Midnight Run for the Homeless, okay. um, or I should say for those without shelter, which is a way I prefer to state it. Oh, very nice. Um, and involved in other things like the local food pantry. So there's a lot of mission and outreach work mm -hmm. done at the church. It's also a fun place because we have a variety of worship styles. Some of our services are on the more quiet contemplative side with bell choir or with the choir, and others have a live rock band that plays at the church. And mm. And they've been kind enough to let me sing along and play the saxophone with them too when they play now. So, so we have music of a variety of styles when we worship too. So it's a very interesting place and I'm glad to be there. Lovely, and I'm sure they're glad to have you there. Thank you. Now, could you just talk a little bit about the different um, ministries within the church? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, we, we have, um, as I mentioned, different ways people get involved in the music, bells sure. and choir and others. We have a women's group that meets for book discussion. Mm -hmm. Right now we're doing a interfaith discussion based on Oprah's Belief series, right. which is a cable series, mm -hmm. and we're watching each episode and having discussion afterward, which is great because it's drawing people from church and community to have that dialogue. Very nice. And there's really a lot of different ministries. Um, so it's it's very interesting. Wonderful. Yes. So now, um, this since where we will be going in, th this will be aired around the time going into Christmas. So I think this would be a wonderful time to use this segment to talk about Christmas and the the meaning of Christmas. Mm -hmm. So if you would mm -hmm. like to share about her uh, Christmas, absolutely. Um, I actually brought a little nativity. It's very small. You may not be able to see it too lovely. well, viewers, but. Um, I like this one because it's very simple. You know, sometimes you see elaborate nativity, but this is a very simple one. And it, it just reminds us that Jesus was born in humble circumstances. And for me, the meaning of Christmas is, um, it's a time when we remember that God enters into our lives in many different ways. And so the birth of Jesus reminds us of the birth of the divine within us and in our world. And that happens today, too. It's not just something that happened long ago. So I think when we look at the nativity, it can be a reminder to let the divine be born in us and to live out the values of God, love, joy, peace, and other values of God. Okay. So I, Christmas is a time of goodwill and a time when many people take on extra volunteering to help others. But it's a spirit that we want to keep going throughout the year. Okay, good, very good. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the things that you will do during the Christmas time at the church? Well, at the church, um, we will be having um, a lovely concert on December 20th. Mm. It's going to be a beautiful um, classical music concert involving some singers from our choir, lovely. as well as um, soloists, and it should be lovely. And so that will be happening. We'll have a family fun night for children as well that involves singing the Christmas carols mm. and reflecting on the season. We'll be having Christmas Eve candlelighting and family services at 5, 7, and 11 on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And um, we will continue our regular programming as well, the belief discussions okay. and the 
sisters group, which is our women's group, will be meeting on mm -hmm. the second weekend of December okay. to begin talking about what books they would like to discuss in the new year. Okay. Because they find that getting together um, to talk about ideas and share their faith will be positive. Fabulous. And there's a lot more, too. We have a Sunday school and other programs happening. I was going to ask you weekly. about that. So will you be having a Christmas pageant in the church? Yes. Thank you for reminding me yes. because, yes, mm -hmm. at, like many churches, there is a Christmas pageant. Mm -hmm. um, and that will actually be offered during our morning worship on the 13th of December mm -hmm. at the 10 a.m. service. So Great, certainly if any of the viewers are local, please come. Uh, we would love to have you join us. We do have two services every week, one at 8 and one at 10. Mm -hmm. The 8 o'clock is a quiet communion time. And the 10 o'clock is a service with preaching and music. So it's a more um, elaborate service than the eight. The eight is very simple. Sometimes mm -hmm. there are only six or eight people. Right. But it's very intimate. Yes. It's very intimate. We have a reading of scripture. We have mm -hmm. a message. We gather at the altar and have communion. And it's for those who want to start their day with that strengthening and spiritual time and then go on maybe they have other things later in the day mm -hmm. and for those who prefer a larger group community experience we have the 10 o'clock wonderful service. thank you mm -hmm. so now I know that you it also airs on LNC TV yes so if you want to share some of the uh, the websites and some of the uh, links oh, sure. that they can go into YouTube to get um, right. to watch it that's true mm -hmm. um, you can get a taste of our services on our YouTube channel Mamaronic United Methodist Church you just simply search under the name of our church Church, Mamaronic United Methodist, you will see some segments of the 10 o'clock service. Okay. And our website we're very happy about is mamaronicumc.org. That's great. easy to remember. Wonderful. So that's the website. Yes. Now, if, you, if, you, if they wanted to see it on YouTube, how would they see it on YouTube? So they would just go to youtube.com and then up in the search bar type in Mamaronic United Methodist Church and great. it will pop up. Wonderful. Now, yes. is there a phone number if they wanted to reach you to find out more information? Oh, about? absolutely. Okay. Yes. 914-698-4343. Um, mm -hmm. okay. three, three. Wonderful. And that'll great. reach the church. Yes, excellent. Yeah. So now, um, we spoke a little bit about Christmas. What other th activities go on around that time, apart from the, you know, the uh, Christmas pageant and the lighting and the different components? What are some of the other things that happen during that period? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I think that, you know, one of the things that we'll continue to do is the midnight run. We mm -hmm. do that in December. <coughs> right. So that's part of our Christmas observance. You know, okay. you think about Mary and Joseph um, looking for shelter. That's a big part of our Christmas story. Mm -hmm. And so those without shelter, needing food, needing clothing, um, the midnight run enables us to actually go into Manhattan in December mm -hmm. when it's getting colder, when right. people are especially in need, and bring sandwiches, soup, coffee, mittens, clothing, things that can help in that situation. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of significant that it happens right. in December. Okay, good. And I think, you know, this year, I, I can just say to you, Cicely, for me personally, I think I really want to focus on the peacemaking aspect mm. of Christmas. Um, right. I think that I some think of our carols lost. speak about it. Mm -hmm. When we light the candles on right. Christmas Eve mm -hmm. and we sing Silent Night, we're really, we're really praying for peace in the world, the peace of God's presence. And as God came into the world, and we celebrate that on Christmas in that sacred story, as we celebrate in other faiths as well, their sacred stories of how God enters the world, it's a real reminder that we, we want to carry that within us and spread it in the world. Mm -hmm. And so, to me, that's really an important message, especially this year. We've just come through some difficult times in November with some violent acts, mm -hmm. and it gets everyone thinking about how do we respond to violence. And I always say that, um, you know, Jesus came into the world to say, love your enemies, blessed are the peacemakers. He modeled that. Mm -hmm. He told his disciples not even to pick up the sword against those who were capturing him. Right. And so I feel that if we're honoring the birth of Jesus, that we ought to honor the values of Jesus and particularly the value of peacemaking. And so I would just encourage that um, in everyone who's listening to think about ways you can be a bridge builder between different groups of people, um, also cultivating peace in your own heart, mm -hmm. which is a daily endeavor. Right. It's not always easy, but 
if we think about this nativity as Christ being born in us or the divine being born in us and reborn every day, perhaps that gives us a different way to look at our nativity scenes that we have mm -hmm. during the Christmas season. Because, you know, when you, at this time of the year, you see all the beautiful lights and mm -hmm. nativity scenes, and it's like, do they really know what the meaning of that is? Right. So you sharing, it's very um, significant. So um, as we're getting close to, um, well, not really close to the end of the show, but we're going to have some wonderful music that is going to be done by you. And I think oh, it's going to you. be great um, to have like some sort of a difference and to have those music that was inspired by yourself and some that you got from the uh, book, you know, the yes, hymn. Yes, thank you. So just share a little bit what made you get into that. Well, everybody has different um, innate gifts, I mm -hmm. would say, yes. and things that they're drawn to. And from a young age, I was drawn to music. Um, a friend and I started writing songs one day when we were bored on a rainy day. We said, oh, let's write some songs. Mm. And then we decided to put on a little concert for the parents. This was back in fourth grade or fifth grade. And we, we found that enjoyable. And I think the reason we found it enjoyable is that that was something calling to us because it's part of our purpose. Um, for me, it's always been a big part of my life. I started learning clarinet and saxophone in elementary school. Mm. and. Um, the ukulele more recently is something I've right. picked up that I enjoy uh, playing as I write songs. I, for me, writing songs isn't so much sitting to write them, it's just receiving them. And they receiving, come through. They what come comes through? through exactly. A message or a tune comes through. How lovely. And so I feel that it's a big part of my purpose to share what comes through. It's understanding what your purpose is. Yeah. And tapping into that and sharing with others. As a pastor, I, I speak a lot mm -hmm. about God, but I think some of the purest sharing comes from what comes through in the music mm -hmm. and the message of the music. Right. So that's why I've chosen to, to bring some of that today, mm -hmm. to share what I think is really important and integral to Christmas. Great is peace. And I wouldn't like to, to, to ignore this wonderful space that we're in today. Mm. And this is the museum mm. in uh, Mary Knowles. How beautiful. And so Pastor Karen is going to do a wonderful ending segment in this wonderful area with the peace doves right behind her. And she was had that inspiration <laughs> to bring a peace song. So it's going to tie in so beautifully. And so Pastor Karen, I want yes. to thank you. Oh, you're welcome. For being a guest on the show. And you've shared with them how they can reach you. Yes. And so at this point, viewers, I will say thank you for tuning in again and enjoy Pastor Karen's wonderful display of music. And um, I look forward to you tuning in again. And so have a wonderful day. And please join the Give and Take show, The Positive in Lives whenever you can. Thank you. One of my favorite carols of the holiday season is it came upon the midnight clear. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of Those are the first two verses, and 
the other two verses are very beautiful, for they say, For lo, the days are hastening on by prophet seen of old, when with the ever-encircling years shall come the time foretold, when peace shall over all the earth its ancient splendors fling, and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing. That's the final verse. Beautiful message. I want to sing a few now that I wrote. This song called God Made the World was written when I was in fifth grade. And I have to thank the United Methodist clergy and laity that uh, raised me at Memorial Methodist Church in White Plains because I'm sure that their message was getting through to me and that's how this song came about. God made the world was written in the 1970s and it seems more relevant than ever, doesn't it, in this world that so badly needs peace? So I want to also sing a song called Come Around. And this song is about the early church and how they tried to live, um, live in peace and live in generosity and compassion and in community. And I think here we are at Mary Knoll for this interview, and it seems like they embody that spirit. So the more that we live in generosity, peace, and community, the more that peace spreads in the world. Our brothers and our sisters in the early church Come around, come 
So then they told the story of how the risen Lord called disciples to worship and to carry. We continue on the journey, we continue on the path, by God's grace, peace and love we are sharing, singing And that's what it takes, isn't it? All of us together. So I'd like to do two more songs. This one's called When Shadows Fall Away Into the Light. This one came to me in 2014. When shadows fall away into the And I'll conclude the music with one more song that I feel is particularly um, the message that I want to send today, especially sitting by all these beautiful peace cranes that people have folded here. And this one's called Only One Answer, and it really summarizes what I believe about life and what's important. There is only one answer. the problem or who is to blame there is one answer it will never change love is the answer the answer is the same a man goes to the bar tending his wounds that left him with scars
stays at home and cries till she starts to scream. Her husband left and took the kids, stole her very last dream. She thinks her life is over, nothing left to discover. I wish that I could tell her you can begin again, cause there is an and go